So what is it what is it that makes parents fear the topic of sex? I'm talking with Josh McDowell here about the bare facts. 39 questions your parents hope you never ask about sex. And these teen listeners have there's, lots of questions. Yeah. They ask their friends, unfortunately. There's, there's probably several things. One, the reason they don't talk about it is the way they've been taught in the body of Christ. That they basically, sex is sinful, sex is dirty, etc. Mm -hmm. And that is so evil. That is evil to teach that because... You take from Genesis to Revelation, there's not one single verse in the Bible that even hints that sex is sinful. Hmm. I've not had one person in 48 years ever point. People say, oh, that's wrong. I bet no. You show me one verse in the Bible that says sex is sinful. Hmm. There's none. You know what happened is this. Parents, grandparents, pastors, youth pastors have taken what the Bible says about the misuse of sex. And they've applied it to sex. That sex is dirty. Let me tell you, you look at the scriptures, look at the Song of Solomon, mm -hmm. one of the most sensuous, right. one of the most sexy books ever written. Mm -hmm. So many of the Proverbs, everything. And uh, so the Bible, when it talks about sex, is the way sex God created. What for? The beauty of it, everything. We're like in uh, Proverbs 5, it talks about with the wife of your youth. Now I'm quoting the scriptures, so don't get on me. It says, <laughs> let her breasts, oh, the B word. Right. Let her breast satisfy you at all times. Mm -hmm. People say, do you take the Bible literally? I said, I sure like to here. <laughs> and, then, and then it says this, and let and be exhilarated. And the word exhilarated means to be drunk, inebriated in mm -hmm. the Hebrew. Be drunk with her sex. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says about the sex the way God created it. Then it says, avoid sexual immorality. For it's right. one sin you can make against your body. It's about the misuse of mm -hmm. sex. Right. Then another reason is, is that so many parents feel guilty. That's right, absolutely. Well, what do I say to my daughter if she says, Mom, did you and Daddy right. wait? Right. One, you can't lie. Right. You cannot lie. It can destroy your relationship with your child. And I could write a whole book on that of stories right. coming back to me. And they say, well, so if I don't talk about it, then I'll never, I'll never be. No, no. You can take a negative, turn it into a positive. you got to be honest. Say, you know, honey, your father and I didn't. But we wish we had. And here's and why. This book and the DVD will help you to explain to them why it would have been best mm. to have waited. So you can take a negative and turn it into an absolute positive. Wow. The other is so many parents have a sense of shame and guilt. Yeah. Look, 51% of, of homes, Christian homes, all of them, divorce lawyers say the number one reason for divorce is pornography. Not finances anymore. Pornography. Focus in the family says 47% of all Christian homes, the number one problem is pornography. So you have that sense of shame, of guilt, so you don't talk about it. Even the, in your current lifestyle, that's you're right. feeling guilt, not even just the past. And the other, they've never been taught. How do you talk about it? That's why I did right. the DVD in this book, <laughs> is to help parents. You see, yeah. if you don't have knowledge, you have fear. Knowledge breeds compassion, courage. Mm. And so I want to help parents to understand these things, not just from a biblical, from a medical, scientific, and cultural right. perspective that will give them confidence and knowledge to talk to their child. And then here's the key all. You cannot monitor your kids on the Internet. You can't. Everything is just one click away. So, oh, no, Why, we went on focus, right. we did this, we got all these monitors in what about their cell phone? One oh, Just one click away. Nintendo's. Well, then we will take this. Well, about a, what about their friend's yeah. iPhone? What about their friend's yeah. computer? What their friend? You can't monitor the that. The little game things go online. You yeah. know what the best prophylactic is? You know what the best condom is? For Character. Mm -hmm. Character. Second, parents modeling. Mm -hmm. Song of Solomon. You know, most parents would die, but I raised my children. You can ask my kids when they were very young, six, seven, eight years old. I wanted my children to know I absolutely love sex with their mother. I wanted them to know that we had some of the greatest <laughs> sex <laughs> life, <laughs> is it? Yeah, we wanted to know they had some of the greatest sex life in the whole world. Why? Because you ask my children, one of their greatest reasons for waiting, they wanted to have in marriage and sex and love and family 
what I have with their mother and with those kids, that's their greatest oh. motivation to stay pure. I love and without that. that, I don't care what you teach. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with teenagers. They're searching for something they don't see. It's this elusive hey, thing. Hey, don't talk that... about teenagers. Eight, nine, ten years old, yeah. we have to You're start. Right. You're right. You can't wait. Right. On, the, on the Internet, think of this. 2.2 billion people on the Internet. 43% of those 2.2 billion go to pornographic sites. The greatest demographic is is 12 to 25 years old. 12. 60-some percent go to pornographic sites. Do you know how many web pages there are? 4.2 million sites. Do you know how many web pages on pornography? 430 million. Everything is just one yeah. click away. Do you know today how many pornographic emails will go out? Just today? Just today. Take a guess. Oh, I, it, it, I, <laughs> a billion. 2.5 billion every billion. day this year of just pornographic websites. Wow. Do you know what age, the average age a person is exposed to pornography on the internet? 11 years old. Yeah. 11 years old. I just wrote a book. It's not released yet, but it's dealing with. Well, you can put that into there. Yeah, no. it's it's finished. <laughs> it's with Kriegel, but it deals with those very topics about um, parents talking to their kids about this, and they think I don't want to expose them to this before it's you know before they're ready. But if it's in your mind, it's in theirs, and their friends are exposing no, them. And they're often it's not in your mind; it's in theirs. Yeah. Because you see, to them, it's all just one click away. Some of the most. It's, see, it's called, I call it intrusive immorality. Mm -hmm. They that, can open an unsuspecting email. They can just pop it open, and it, there's a, an image that they'll never be able to erase. Most teenagers that say they got hooked on pornography and start going to it doing their homework, uh, and they clicked on the wrong. And see, for many for of these, you can't get right off. You have to work yeah. and work and work at getting off that Keep site. Opening. And then it plants it in the mind. And it's there. And this is why, if you wait until teenage years... Kiss your kids goodbye. Yeah. It's too late. Yeah. you got to start at 8, that's 9, what I, 10 years that's what old. I, that's my mission, is to preempt these issues. Oh, that's a good word. Preempt. <laughs> yeah. Preempt. Yeah. yeah. Teach them how to prepare them for the response they're going to have when they face these things. Not wait until it's done and they've had to come up with the answer and the solution in the heat of the moment. They're not equipped for that yet. And if, we, if we're honest with them and, and talk to them and tell them what they're going to experience, tell them what they're going to see, what they're going to hear, and prepare them for it, and show them the alternative, like you're saying. Well, boy, you hit on it. I'm going to have to get your book <laughs> after I read mine. <laughs> but here's the key. If that started at seven, eight, nine years old, you haven't planted vision into your kids. Yeah. What do you want to do with your life? There's some great things out there God has planned in, in marriage and sexuality and, and goal and profession, everything. Yeah. That if you don't start young, plan that in, where kids can see beyond their age or where they mm -hmm. are, then they're going to be totally conditioned by their environment. I, there's a book just came out. Trisha Goyer and Robin Jones Gunn wrote Praying for Your Future Husband. I thought we heard promoting mine. And we are, we are. But this, you know, this teen resources, they're great. It's, it goes right along with that idea of putting your mind in the future on that spouse, that perfect, that, it, nothing's perfect, but that prized covenantal relationship between the husband and the wife and God and putting that in our teenagers' minds, younger, 8, 9, 10, teen, to pray for that person who's out there right now and envision that relationship. Do you have children? To be, I have six. Do you have, oh, I only got four. I wanted to have eight. <laughs> I've so got you beat again. I have <laughs> two-year-old triplets. I've got seven grandkids. But anyway, <laughs> uh, which are not the same because grandkids go home at night, thank right. God. But remember getting, the remember getting the, especially the early age, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve-year-old, the report cards came about social skills, right. character, everything like that. When I went over with my kids, my first three kids were all valedictorian, mm -hmm. straight A's, 100s, everything. But when I got the report cards, if I was on the road, they'd fax them to me. You know what a fax is now, they'd email yeah, them. Right, right. But they would fax them to me. I would always call up and go over the report card. And the first thing I would want was character. Mm -hmm. And I always took it. My kids remember this. I'd say, you know, kids, I appreciate the good grades you've got. But these grades can lead to many bad things if you don't develop character. Mm -hmm. These grades won't lead you to having what mom and dad have. Mm. It's your character that will lead you to having what mom and dad mm. have. And I always put the grades in the light of relationships and 
character and vision and purpose in life. And this is where I say the best condom yeah. is character. Yeah. That's a great quote. That's a great line. That's a book right there. It is. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're talking with Josh McDowell, uh, Bare Facts, 39 Questions Your Parents Hope You Never Ask About Sex. And it is. It's one of those topics, you know, you just never know. Parents think, will I get the clue of when it's time for me to bring up this subject with my kids? And it's too late if you're asking that question. You know, that's probably it. Yeah. Because you, you know when I started? When my kids were born. Mm. In fact, some of the things that happened when my kids were four, five, six years old, you wouldn't even let me mention on radio. <laughs> no <laughs> illustrations of how. Yeah. See, the best sex education, this is the dumbest thing in the world. I just talked to a wife. She said, you know, my, my son is 15, and I keep telling my husband he's got to give him the talk. I said, lady, forget it. 15? It's too late. The talk never works. The talk is only effective in the light of ongoing conversation. Yeah. The best sex education is not a talk at 12, 13, 14. Best sex education is starting when they're born. 30 seconds here, 10 seconds mm -hmm. here, a minute here, two minutes here. Step in the dress, step back. Never overload, never overload the images. Go to the where they are, emotionally, spiritually, and everything is the best sex education. Mm -hmm. Can I share one of them? Yes. I'd like to Please. share two, but one of them is, I'll, I'll share both of them. You <laughs> All can right, I can out. edit whatever I need to. We, we came home, and uh, my wife said, our youngest daughter said, would you give her a bath? I said, sure. So I went in, I said, I started drawing away. I said, honey, now get undressed, but I got a surprise for her. I brought her home a little yellow ducky. I walked out around like a horseshoe going down the hallway, and she screamed. Oh my gosh, my heart just, I mean, it threw up. I ran back, what's wrong, honey? My little, she was probably about four years old, three years old, maybe sitting on the edge of the thing looking at herself she said daddy daddy my penis is inside out i mean come on she looked at her brother well, come on i thought she'd lost it you know you know, you know what most is. parents say you know what most parents say is oh we don't talk about that kid. no i sat down next to my mom i said oh no honey that's how god created you he makes little boys with penises like your brother and little girls with vagina isn't that wonderful what god has done now let's take our bath that took 20 seconds that's sex education. I'm out with another daughter, and she always loved, we got this dog, a mutt, and it was her dog, and she loved when I was home to go walking in the evening. We kind of lived out in the woods. So we were out walking, and we were walking along. She says, Daddy, what type of dog is mutt? Rascal's was his name. I said, well, uh, she's part this, part this, part this. She looked at me, didn't say anything. We're walking along. Finally, she stopped and said, Daddy, did its parents have group sex? Oh, no, no, fuck! In the mind of a child! That's you know how many parents that get embarrassed and say, oh, we don't talk about that? No! I said, oh, honey. And I, I explained, as her daddy, she was like 11, 12 years old. I explained it all to her. Yeah. But you can't laugh. I kept a straight face. Right. We got back, she went in the house, I went into the garage, it just broke up oh, on the floor. Tears. I just roared, yeah. those were the funny. That's sex education. Yeah. It took about. A minute and a half. And the problem there, the, the neat thing is, she you'd done it all along. The 30 well, seconds, a, the two minutes. They that's feel why comfortable with it. Could, they they yeah. understand it. See, I can always put it in the beauty that God created and how the misuse of that is sin. Right, right. Because it robs you of everything God created for you as a single person and mother and a mm -hmm. wife and a husband, a mm -hmm. father, whatever. And so I control it as a parent. This is why I wish every kid that comes to hear me speak I'm just reinforcing what mom and dad has already taught in the home. What this book does in the DVD, it will help parents to understand many of the medical issues, scientific issues, biblical issues of sexuality and the challenges today, and then will give them the confidence to relate it to their children in an accurate, biblically-based, medically sound, relevantly culture, culturally relevant way. And if you know how to do that, you're not afraid. Well, that's right. You're not afraid that they're going to ask the questions. Um, where can we get this? Oh, what? I am so appreciative of Moody Press. This is the fourth book I've done with them, that they stepped out into this area, and they've done it once before with Hooked, which is one of the best books on the aspects of the dangers of immoral sexuality. Um, but Moody Press, you can go to almost any Christian bookstore. You should have the book and the DVD, or just go to josh.org. Easy and you enough. get it there, and we probably have it discounted. Okay, DVD. But don't as get well. the book without the DVD, and don't get the DVD without, without the, book. the book. 
DVD title again? Same or? thing, Bare Facts and Sex, okay. Love, and Relationships. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to encourage all my listeners to pick this up. I hope so. And then talk about your book, Encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate oh, thank this. This you. was an awesome. Great interview. Why don't you give me a copy of your too. book that we're sitting here? They in. are. Absolutely. I want one. 